Sharknado. Too many of them. We're gonna need a bigger chopper. So anyone familiar with the website would know that uh, I'm no stranger to the asylum. In fact, if you check out our talking in theater segments, you'll see that uh, my roommate and I are quite familiar with a lot of the asylum's past works. Now's not the time to bust my balls, Laughlin. You want to help out? Join the recovery unit. But every once in a while, they do come up with something original. And more than just original, they come up with something that is bizarrely interesting. So let's talk about this fanatical film that has somehow spread to immense proportions on the internet. So what might Sharknado be about? Well, uh, you could probably take it from the name that there's probably going to be sharks, probably going to be tornadoes, probably sharks inside of tornadoes and you'd be right uh but there's also family drama yes this time i'm afraid the asylum not only wants to make their own movie but they also want to make a little bit of a roland emmerich movie so yeah probably not their best idea so what sharknado has going for itself is that it has the two things that the asylum does best that's shark attacks and cgi storms a lot of the best Asylum movies do have something relating to sharks or something relating to storms. I don't know why that that's their big go-to, but it is. And for the most part, it's pretty funny. It's really hilarious anytime they work in a, a, a bad storm too because they always film it during a nice, sunny, beautiful day and then they just put in the storms. So when you're looking directly at it, it's like, oh, there's a tornado. But anytime you see somebody's reaction, it's clearly, it's a very nice, pleasant day. Like all the establishing shots are just nice and sunny and beautiful. I would like to be there if it wasn't for the CGI <laughs> weather. Uh, so we have an interesting cast this time. The acting was pretty okay, but some actors of note, uh, you have uh, Ian uh, Zuring, uh, who's best known for uh, Beverly Hills 90210. Uh, but it was funny because the entire movie, I was thinking, I didn't know him from, from Beverly Hills. But what I did know him from, this is just me, I knew him from Godzilla the Animated Series. He was one of the voices of the main characters. So every time I wasn't paying attention, I just heard him talk. I was just like, oh, <laughs> hey, there's a little bit of nostalgia for me. Uh, I'm sure anybody else who's older than me would know for sure, like, oh, yeah, 90210. Uh, by the way, he's a professional surfer, so, yeah, really, really, really breaking the genres there. Um, also, on the positive side, we have uh, uh, Jason uh, Simmons, who, uh, who's known for Baywatch. Yeah, and it's it was weird because it was like uh, it was like the some weird '90s TV star resurgence happening in this movie, but but I guess they pull it off because they're like they're probably the best actors in this movie, uh, and that is including Tara Reid. Now Tara Reid, uh, her career has kind of nosedived uh, probably since the late '90s, probably probably since the year 2000, and. Um, Boy, does she not put any effort in this. Hey, let us in. No, what are you doing here? And what happened to him? It's nothing. Your pity saved my life. He's not my fit anymore. And who is she? And that brings us to the whole family dynamic stuff. Uh, <laughs> Ian uh, Zuring, he's playing this uh, older surfer guy who owns this kind of uh, seawalk uh, restaurant right next to the shore. So he's the first one who gets taken out by the uh it's not a tornado yet now it's just a hurricane with sharks in it but we'll get to the sharknado later uh so just just wild waves are, are, are crashing this place and destroying this boardwalk and asylum does uh destruction very well asylum it's almost like final destination the ways that Every small thing in an Asylum movie can kill you. If it's a tiny thing, you'll probably die from it. So, you know, it turns out that uh, Ian uh, Zuring is a, a crappy dad. So his ex-wife, Tara Reid, and their daughter, whoever she is, uh, they hate him. Like, it's not like they're disappointed or they don't like him. They hate him. Like, throughout the entire movie, they just talk about how much they hate him and how... You know, he, he, he 
he goes up there to save them. Like he, that, I think they live uh, probably up in the Be- Beverly Hills uh, area. Hey, I wonder if they live in uh, 90210. But they live somewhere up in the Beverly, Beverly Hills area. So he goes to, to save them, and, and they're just like, Storm, yes, you know, get it out of here. We don't care about you. Okay, well, since a shark did pop out of this pipe and is swimming in our pool, I guess we'll take you in. So that's when you meet the uh, douchebag boyfriend, and he is the poor man's James Martison. They wanted James Martison to play this role so badly. Like, this guy, he has, ch- he has turned his uh, Martison dial to max. And uh, he would have been great to have throughout the movie, but they kill him off pretty quickly. Uh... Too many, too many cocks in the kitchen. You know what I mean? We, we got, we got Ian Zerring. We got uh, Jason Simmons. I think that's enough. Let's scale it back a little bit. But um, that was also another problem. Is that uh, Jason Simmons uh, plays uh, this Australian guy who was a lot of laughs. Like he's, 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 uh, he's not quite Crocodile Dundee, but he is pretty close to it. And they just like they just unceremoniously kill him off. And he was like prepared to go like a hero, like I'm going to do this thing and save everybody. And they're like, "Shark says no." So that was that was disappointing. Asylum. So anyone who might be interested in this movie but doesn't have a lot of experience with Asylum, uh, know this: watching an Asylum film is like watching a little kid play with his toys, and then he just gets bored and then kind of starts up a new narrative. But uses the same toys. Like they'll they'll have a very distinct mission. I have to go save my wife and daughter, and then it's like, oh, what about your son? Oh, yeah, let's go save my son too. And then and then it's like, uh, okay, we got your son. Let's get out of let's let's like, outrun the toy. Let's outrun the storms. Let's just leave California. This is all happening in California, by the way. And uh, I guess a big a big kind of thing about it is like florida always gets hit with hurricanes but california never gets hit with hurricanes so that's why nobody's ever prepared for this huge uh tidal waves that are just coming from the sea everybody's like uh i'm sure we'll be able to handle it so you know first he has to save his wife and daughter then he has to save his son then they're trying to leave but then they stop trying to leave and they're like "We, we have to face the storm what that means, what facing the storm means, is that you have to blow up the tornadoes with propane bombs. They find a little shack, they find some propane, they uh, tie some flares to them, they take a helicopter out close to the tornadoes, they take a helicopter, a helicopter, oh, within like 50 yards of the tornadoes, and the sharks in the tornadoes, and they blow up the tornadoes. And it works. It <laughs> totally works. So throughout the film, they kind of established that Ian uh, Zuring is uh, is kind of heroic. Like he always thinks about other people instead of his family. I didn't, I didn't, it's not like he's a cop. I don't understand. Anyway, uh, but this leads to a really drawn out padding scene, which Asylum films are known for is just, putting padding everywhere they can uh there's a broken down school bus with kids in it and so he repels down from a top of a overhead bridge and gets the kids out because the kids are being surrounded by sharks uh that's another important thing to know about uh this movie there are infinite sharks they never run out there are there is an somewhere there is a spawn point where sharks just pop out and they're just swimming all over the flooded Los Angeles uh, area. And it's so weird that Asylum has this this habit of just introducing like character actors. Like they'll they'll just find somebody like during the auditions like, "Well, look, you're not, you can't be the main character, but you did something funny or you did something unusual, so we'll throw you in anyway." They have this bus driver who I can only describe as an aging Shaggy from Scooby-Doo if the gang finally kicked his patchouli-smelling ass out of the mystery machine. Like, he's just, he's like this close from saying, like, Zoing Scoops! He's, he's right on that border. He's, he can tell he's just like, oh, I want to say it, but he, he doesn't do it. That would make the movie a lot funnier, actually. So there are some 
very funny over the top scenes, but they are mostly near the end. And that's kind of always a problem with an asylum film. Uh, Sharknado, like a lot of stuff the asylum produces, you know, it has a it has a rocky start, it has a kind of meandering middle, and then it has like a really awesome campy end. It's it's really early uh asylum films should only be like uh, 30 minutes long and it should just be the ending of their movies because it's so much better than everything else who you don't even care who the characters are anyway so just bam cut to the ending um but i do have to say that this ending is pretty glorious uh so they're going to you know blow up the tornadoes with the sharks spinning around outside of them and um and one of the main characters this this woman who who ian uh Zuring knew from from working at his bar she she survives to the very end of the movie and then she falls out of the helicopter and she gets caught in midair by a shark. A shark eats her while she's falling out of the helicopter. Oh no, there, well there goes that character. But then, near the very end, a huge great white shark is going to tackle Ian Zering's uh, daughter. So he jumps up into it with a chainsaw and gets eaten whole and everybody's like oh no he's dead he got he got eaten whole by a shark and the shark's not moving so i assume it's dead too but then he chainsaws his way out oh, okay well that was expected and then he pulls out the chick that fell out of the helicopter what there are literally countless sharks one shark eats one person then it eats another person who's friends with that person, and that person cuts them both out of the shark. I, what serendipity? <laughs> but it's, it's, again, it's funny. It's gloriously stupid, so it's funny because of how stupid it is. And as for me, I was just kind of laughing my ass off just really thinking about this because for some reason, these tornadoes pick up sharks and only sharks. Like, just a tornado by itself should have just tons of debris in it, but if it did, it'd kill all the sharks because they'd be bobbing into stuff. So it's just sharks being whooped around in the air. And um, looking past the fact that the sharks weren't, you know, turned into pulp by the centrifugal force of the tornadoes or suffocated by the lack of water, what with them being uh, in a tornado for like 15 to 30 minutes... Um, you, I'm pretty sure that they would probably just immediately die the moment they hit the ground from, you know, being flung around by a tornado. But no, for some reason, it's just, it's just funny to watch a flying shark eating people mid-flight. Now, you might be thinking, like, you know, why... Why is this movie in particular? Like, there's there's tons of sci-fi originals. There's tons of asylum movies. Why in this one? Why is this one in particular getting so much getting so much uh, airways? Why is it? Why are people paying attention to Sharknado? And I think it really does go back to the um, snakes on a plane phenomena. Granted, this movie is nowhere as good as Snakes on a Plane. Thank you, Samuel Jackson, for making that movie awesome. Um, but it really is just the bizarre spectacle of seeing something so improbable, so dumbfounding, that your brain just has no choice but to turn off and laugh. Like, your brain has to, to protect itself. It must turn off so it no longer thinks about the dynamics of sharks being thrown in a tornado. It's just like, just, just laugh. Just laugh at it. Laugh at, laugh at the shark landing on the roof of a car and then biting its way through. <laughs> funny stuff so uh, would i recommend um would i recommend sharknado uh if you if you can laugh at this kind of stuff like if you're a bad movie connoisseur this is right up your alley if you if you're somebody who actively seeks out the room or showgirls you know or you know anything along those lines troll 2 then you will probably really enjoy sharknado and if you're just on the fence i would say see it anyway because while the Asylum isn't known for giving us quality films, by God, they are still the ones that are willing to take the chance and produce something original and untested. Something like tornadoes with sharks in them. Oh, God.